Saudi Arabia imposes controversial restrictions on Ramadan. On March 3rd, the Minister of Islamic Affairs in Saudi Arabia, Abdul Latif Al Sheikh, published and shared a document containing regulations for the Islamic holy month of Ramadan that everyone in the kingdom must follow. According to the announcement, the use of loudspeakers and the broadcast of prayers will be restricted during this period. Additionally, uh, individuals will only be allowed to participate in the um, uh, uh, itikaf, or spiritual salute, seclusion, if they provide proper identification. Furthermore, the prayers will be required to be kept short and timely, and the mosques are also not allowed to collect donations for organizing iftar, which are the meals to break the fast. It has also been stated that children will not be allowed to attend prayers in mosques, and iftar meals will not be permitted inside mosques. Many Muslims criticized the new ruling, claiming that under the Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, the Saudi Arabian government further attempted to limit the influence of Islam in public life and even compared it to Tunisia under uh, Zini al Abdi, uh, excuse me, Abdine ben Ali and the former Soviet Union. Wow, this is extreme. Um, a lot of Muslims are getting butthurt over this, and a lot of people are celebrating it as well and trying to see if they could have something similar happening in their own country. But what have you seen reactions to this by Muslims online? Um, I well, I the main reaction that I saw is actually one that we included in the article that I thought we could um, watch together because I think it provides um, like that perspective. And it's also the way that they phrase it in the video in the article um, that I provided is a bit misleading um, in terms of what the restrictions actually dictate. But um, Armin, what have been the reactions that you've seen? Well, I've been seeing reactions from Iran on, from Omid Dana, for you specifically, <laughs> uh, which, is, which was making fun of the Islamic Republic. And he's saying, the, look, the original Muslims have realized how backwards Islam is <laughs> and they're toning it down right so it's like the OG Muslims are toning down Islam everybody is realizing that Islam is bad for everything it's bad for <laughs> business it's bad for politics and even the OG Muslims are now realizing it when would the Islamic Republic realize that this Islam is bad for everything so wow. like so, oh, wow, oh, wow. so another thing people are saying like you guys are being more Catholic than the Pope now, right? Like if these guys are toning down Islam, why are we toning up Islam, basically? Mm, 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 so that's the mm, reaction mm. I've seen. But let me see, like, what is well, That's not some... really good criticism to give Shias anyways, because they're going to be like, yeah, we are the real Islam. <laughs> that's what we've been telling no, you. I... <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh my... You know these things so well, exactly. They're like... <laughs> The reaction, you know how the supporters of the Islamic Republic would react. It would be, these are not actual Muslims. Like how, how naive do you, are, must you be? We have been telling you that we have to liberate the land of the prophet from these kafirun, from these infidels. The Sauds <laughs> are are not Muslims. So like, and this is proof. This is proof. We have been always telling you that these people are anti-Islam. And what we have been saying for all, like, now they're saying the quiet part out loud. Like, this is something that we have said all the time, and everybody was making fun of us. And now you can see that they're being, we told you that they're pro-Zionist, and we told you that they're not actually Muslim, and you guys told us that we're conspiracy theorists, and now they're actually moving forward with becoming allies of Israel, and they are anti as on they're anti Ramadan and they're anti the call to prayer. So we have been proven correctly. Also, the supporters of the Islamic Republic would say um, about predictions and stuff is that Khamenei said at some point that Israel will destroy itself. Okay, he said that a couple of years ago, right? Mm -hmm. And Israel has 25 years, right? And now with Israel's internal 
you know, conflict, we're like, see, everything that our supreme leader said is coming true. <laughs> like, we told you, we told you we don't need to destroy Israel because Israel would destroy itself. And now everything we said is coming true. So, yeah. Damn. But, <laughs> oh, Secular Sakai just donated one membership as well to say, to Sajid. And another one. Oh, as that's well. lovely. Thank uh, you. There's some tweets that you highlighted here. You and our editor. Yeah, let's Which watch one? this video. Not not this top one, this the one? middle one. No, no, the next one. This one? Yes. Yes. Okay, let me know if you have idea. Vince Salman has issued a new set of orders and rules that have been Can published you make it on full the screen, Ministry please? website. Okay, let me go back from the beginning. Oh, I have to continue on Twitter to make it full screen. Mm. Vince Salman. Yeah. Bin Salman has issued a new set of orders and rules that have been published on the Ministry of Islamic Affairs website designed to tone down and restrict Ramadan in Saudi Arabia as he continues with his push to drive Islam out of the public sphere. Firstly, the ban on the use of loudspeakers for mosques will not be lifted during Ramadan. The call to prayer remains restricted to one third of the volume of the loudspeakers and loudspeakers are banned entirely for Quranic recitation even if worshippers struggle to hear the Imam from the back. Secondly, the broadcasting of Taraweeh, Ramadan prayers, is banned on all media platforms. The famous Masjid Quba, where the legendary Imam of Medina, Muhammad Ayyub, rahimahullah, was discovered, and other mosques, are all banned from broadcasting the recitation of the Imam and broadcasting prayers that are often watched in the hundreds of thousands by Muslims around the world. The holy mosques of Mecca and Medina are not wow. expected to be included in this ban. Bin Salman seeks to avoid a backlash similar to last year when he tried to apply this ban to the two holy mosques. Thirdly, the new rules order that prayers should be shortened and the dua or supplications should be kept short. Fourthly, anyone looking wow. to sit in the mosque in the last 10 days for itikaf must show ID. In other words, the state apparatus will intimidate worshippers by collecting information for surveillance, a tactic that Bin Ali used in Tunisia to discourage people from going to the mosques. The fifth rule is that mosques are banned from collecting donations from worshippers, whether that be to fund meals for those breaking their fast or for any other purposes. It's worth noting here that worshippers often donate during Ramadan towards meals on the basis of a saying of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whoever gives food for a fasting person to break his fast, he will have a reward like the one who fasted. The sixth rule is that worshippers are ordered not to bring their children to the mosques. And this rule is almost identical to that of Soviet satellite states that ban children from mosques in order to prevent Islamic influences on their nurturing and upbringing. The seventh rule is that mosques may not provide meals for fasting worshippers inside the mosque and cannot set up tents outside for communal meals at the time of breaking the fast. There are other rules, but Bin Salman's message is absolutely clear. In Saudi, Ramadan must be quiet. Okay, so here's the thing. D is bringing up a point, our lovely editor D. She's saying, I saw a lot of people saying the rules have been misinterpreted by the media. And so this guy is not really, he's making this a lot less nuanced than it actually is. And the comparisons to like Stalin are so extreme. <laughs> yeah. Because if you go and read the rules as translated into English, it's really not as crazy as they're making it seem. When I went and read all the rules in English, what struck me was that, I mean, granted, I'm assuming that this translation is accurate, right? The, it was it, the translation, translation issued by the ministry itself. And it just seemed to me like a lot of the rules are around keeping Ramadan more orderly in more well controlled and more efficient for the Saudi government. Like keeping things more cleanly, keeping things more orderly, like they want things to be timely, <laughs> they want the prayers to be on time, um, and not messy, like the, the no children they say is supposed to be to help keep things um uh you know less distracting for people while they're while they're in prayer um they're supposed to ensure that women's areas are kept cleanly um and the, the no the no filming of prayers and stuff is supposed to basically be to prevent people from 
I don't know, they kept they basically making unintended mistakes that are then broadcast. I'm not exactly sure what they're getting at there, but they're saying that it's because for like privacy and they don't want people to, I don't know, I don't buy get it. caught on a high, hot mic. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I don't buy it. I really do think that Mohammed bin Salman is de-Islamizing Saudi Arabia. Okay. Um, but he can't just go out and do it. Like the things that you're saying seems to me like excuses. Um, the guy mm -hmm. needs tourism. The guy needs investment. The guy needs a rebranding of Saudi Arabia. So he wants to tone out, tone down how religious the whole country is. And what do you think he would look like? Obviously, he can't just come out and say it's like, well, I'm like, I just don't like the Azan. I'm against the Azan. Like he can't just say that. He needs some level of plausible deniability. He needs to find excuses for the reasons why they're doing these things. But it's completely in line. The reason why, I mean, maybe that guy that you, that guy in that video, he's exaggerating it, but I don't think it's as nothing to see here as much as like, oh, these are just completely not a move against Islamization, Islamism. These are completely just for other purposes. I mean, look at the trend of where the country is moving. Look at the True. push for bringing celebrities, Justin Bieber, alcohol, gender mixing, uh, movie theaters, um, looser control over what women are wearing. Uh, what else? Well, like, I mean, a golden goddamn Kaaba, right? So, and no Sharia zones, um, women without hijab and even bikinis walking around in some places in Saudi Arabia now. Um, That's what wild. Was that, that, was really, that was a very significant thing. They, were, they had Halloween. Thing. I mean, going at, yeah, Halloween, having Halloween. Halloween which is like was calling, crazy. Yeah. I mean, Even I was like, damn. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, going against um, Hadith, Sahih Hadith, right? Like completely debasing the foundations of Sunni Islam, like calling out every Hadith that is not Mutawatir as... Um, something that you could rely on for the teachings of Islam. So, I mean, with all that background saying like, oh, this is just about making things convenient or make, keeping things clean, it just doesn't sound right. It doesn't seem, I mean, I would be highly skeptical. I think it's they're just moving it more in the direction of not making Islam the big theme of Saudi Arabia, you know, which is kind of crazy to say even out loud. You don't want as not wanting Saudi Arabia to be associated with Islam. So like, what? <laughs> I didn't, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't, make, yeah, doesn't yeah, even yeah. sound right. But he, but I think Mohammed bin Salman wants that when you think of Saudi Arabia, what comes to your mind to be technology, futurism, shopping malls, you know, uh, investments, you know, business, mm -hmm tourism he wants you to think of beaches and you know riding camels and you know desert tourism you know mo mostly high-tech futuristic stuff giant crazy cities that's what he wants you to think when you think saudi arabia right um he doesn't want you to think as well so i think that's what that's why he wants this to be told that he's kind of you know how reza shah Banned pictures of camels. That's crazy. You know that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that. That's so, crazy. Yeah, because he thought that it makes his country look backwards. <laughs> That's so crazy. <laughs> he banned pictures of camels. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. If you thought it would look my country look backwards. So what I think it's a kind of thing. <laughs> they make it they make your country look backwards. <laughs> that was funny because I remember you telling me that if you were I can't remember what we were talking about, but we were basically saying that if you were telling Iranians about having camels in the country, they would be offended as if you're saying, What are we, some backwards country? Da 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 because we were talking about yeah. Something about Iranian yeah. camels. I can't remember what. No, if you, yeah, if you're talking you're about like, like oh, you have, have camels those? in Iran, they get yeah. angry. They're like, Yo, you think we're Arabs? Like, what do you think we're Arabs? We don't have camels. And I'm like, you actually do. There, you do have <laughs> like, 
<laughs> you do have camels. <laughs> like, no, we don't have any camels. That's Arab countries you're thinking about. That's not Iran. I'm like, actually, there are some camels in your country. <laughs> so. and, and and it's okay. <laughs> It's okay. It's camels are it's okay, cool. Aziza. <laughs> we have camels. It's, Don't, be it's fine. Don't be ashamed of camels. <laughs> <laughs> Don't camel shame yourself. The internalized Don't camel shaming. <laughs> <laughs> oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. So in terms of Saudi Arabia, what do you think about these changes that are happening? I think I did this is no no middle ground it this is either going to succeed is or it's going to come crashing down okay so this could be a, Re, a muhammad reza shah moment mm. right oh here's mm. now here's what i think about it this could either go the direction of iran or the direction of turkey you're just going to keep the camelophobia there thing up there aren't you Okay. okay. Why not? Yeah, we get it. Stop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's distracting me. All right. So what I mean is that Muhammad Reza Shah, he had his white revolution. The, what what Muhammad bin Salman is doing seems like what Muhammad Reza Shah was doing with his white revolution. Right. He wanted to modernize the country, a giant leap forward. Okay. What did he get instead? He got. An Islamic revolution, right? So, what we're seeing Muhammad bin Salman do right now, Saudi Arabia was already trying to do this more than 40 years ago. Before 1979, if you went to Saudi Arabia, it was very westernized, right? If you watch the news in Saudi Arabia, you saw a woman without hijab giving you the news before 1979. It was like it was going in the westernization direction. However, the Wahhabis were like, no, 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 no. And they attacked the Kaaba and there was blood and everything. Um, over all over the Kaaba, there was bloodshed and killings and everything. And the Saudis That's wild. they they panicked. They were like, Okay, these Wahhabis are in are you know, we can't, it's too soon for us to divorce our, the, the house of Saud and the house of Wahhab is too soon for us to go through that divorce. So they capitulated and they went full on Sharia, right? Now they are reattempting that divorce that they were trying 42 years ago, right? They're reattempting it, right? So the reason why that earlier divorce failed is because that divorce was also happening in Iran with the white revolution of um, and that ended up the Islamists were like, no, 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 no. I mean, the main thing that they were sensitive about was women education and women's right to vote and stuff like that, right? So uh, that's how they're that's how they started becoming against the monarchs, right? Uh, even though the revolution eventually was became leftist, but then it went back to the Islamist hands again. Anyway, that's too much detail. The thing is that the Islamists were mobilized because of the white revolution and because of some earlier reforms that Reza Shah was doing before Muhammad Reza Shah. So what could happen in Saudi Arabia, it, right now, there could be a, a fire underneath all of this because Muhammad, uh, Muhammad bin Salman has been very successful at shutting down the set. Like if all his opposition is either jailed or executed or silenced in some other way. Right. But is it actually silence? Is there some dissent underneath the, all of this? Because Saudi Arabia, there's too much of a conservative base there for everybody to be happy with this. Right. Is there is there a ticking time bomb for this to all of a sudden explode and for uh, for them to come out against Mohammed bin Salman? Would there be a reckoning against the House of Saud because of all these anti-Islam movements? Right. So if that mm -hmm. happens. Just like it happened in Iran, it will go in the direction of the Islamic revolution that happened in Iran. Or if it doesn't, it might go more in line with, with Turkey and Ataturk. So Ataturk, um, you know, it was more successful in con keeping a lot of the secularization. I know in recent years with Erdogan, it went backwards, but overall it was a major success, right? Um, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, the thing is that if how the House of Saud runs out of money, um, then it would be a lot easier for all this dissent to make sense because it's easy to keep people happy when you have a lot of money. But once that money dries out, then the forces of dissent will start showing 
showing themselves more and more and more, right? So the main thing that the if if the Muhammad bin Salman wants to be successful, uh, it really needs to diversify quickly out of or of away from oil, um, and for that it needs investment. So it's basically an all or none game, right? You can't tiptoe. Yeah. You can't be. You can't play. You can't be half in, right? So and he's he's going all in. Because if you half in, half out, then you're not going to get all that investment and all that diversification. But you're also maybe not um, angering all these people a lot. But then because you're half in, half out, you might lose both ways, right? So if you're going to go in, you have to go all in. And that's what he's doing. He's going all in. Risky move. It is. It is. It is. It'll be very interesting to see how this all pans out. Hmm. No, people are saying I'm loving Susie's shirt. Thank you. Yeah, guys, I can. This use was some actually gifted to me by an atheist republic member. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. really? It's good to have friends. Yeah. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary. Japanese gods, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.